There's no term as ill-defined as software-defined. Let's get some clarity next on HP Tech Talk. Welcome to HB Tech Talks. I'm Andy McCaskey from SGR News, and this is a show where we try and get some clarity and uh, talk about defining the new style of IT with experts from Hewlett Packard. Of course, we cover subjects like cloud computing and networking and servers, and today we're going to be focusing on storage. And we've got a real treat because we have two folks uh, who are joining us today. First of all, I'd uh, like to introduce Chris Evans. Chris is actually joining us uh, from uh, from the UK, and he's not an HP uh, uh, employee, but he does know a lot about storage. Yeah, I'm not an HP employee, but I am uh, hopefully able to give you some technical input on this subject. Um, looking forward to talking about it. Yeah, well, I, we're really glad that you're able to join us here today, and uh, and of course, uh, from the HP side, uh, we have. Kate Davis, who's actually joining us from Colorado. It's great to be here today, and it's going to be a good topic to discuss. Well, I think we have a lot of ground to cover, and the crux of it is really kind of the initial topic that I had before we opened about this term software defined. It looks like there have been almost as many definitions as there are people defining but uh, it looks like some order is coming to that now. Yeah, we hope to uh, figure out what the definition is and agree across the industry and move away from just being a buzzword. So you had software-defined network, you have software-defined data center. What are some of the ac other acronyms that were floating around? So I think the, the third one is software-defined storage. Um, eventually, you'll see software-defined servers as server technology changes, but the next one that's really in play right now is storage. Well, Chris, as you have been working in your in your observations of the storage industry, uh, what sorts of variants have uh, you run into? So I guess I'm lucky, Andy, because I get to talk to a lot of different companies, not just HP, but obviously a lot of startups um, and a lot of the established companies. One of the things you're definitely right about is that we're seeing different definitions for this. But I do think people are focusing on the push of features into software and the use of commodity storage. Those seem to be the two main pieces that come out so far, although there is a very big wide variation in um, the different types of technology that people are trying to call software-defined storage. Kate, what are some of the generally accepted features that, um, uh, that everyone can agree upon? I think the base one is that it's software. Uh, it typically runs in a virtualized infrastructure. Um, and it brings real base storage features, then provisioning and snapshots. And um, after that is, is kind of where the, the debate begins. So let's just add some other bits to that, Kate. I think people talk about um, automation. People talk about... Um, abstraction from the hardware, but ultimately you still got to have that hardware somewhere. But those are the sort of features I'm seeing that people are mentioning. And I think we can look at the, the Wikipedia software defined storage article and it, it sort of points us to some of those things. But as you said, they're not 100% clear yet. So I think it's good to add those in as well. Yeah, I think that the biggest thing to look at is, is software defined storage an umbrella? that has a bunch of different technologies in it, or is it solely what the product is? Um, so I, I can see it a different, couple different ways. I can see the, the umbrella actually encompassing both virtual storage and storage hypervisors um, and future software storage that, that comes out. Um, but I think part of the debate is, is it the umbrella or is it specific features in the software product. 
Well, I know in the show notes here, they talked about uh, the idea of it actually being in software and not in microcode. Uh, does this mean firmware in the hardware itself? Or how are you using that term? Um, a lot of our storage arrays and devices that have gone previously have relied on microcode within the actual hardware, which drives the, the features and the functionality. What we're seeing now, I think, is a move away from that specifically and more into um, software to actually deliver this. And Kate mentioned on mentioned the whole idea of virtualization and that abstraction piece to virtualization. And I think people are seeing it more moving away from a traditional um, monolithic array that might have been a historical device, which used microcode to control that, and more into a software um, uh, setup, which would use commodity hardware. And I think that's where we're seeing the difference. I think it it's really about the infrastructure that's being built. Uh, it's thinking about next generation. Um, it's full data centers, it's cloud services, it's how to be flexible with the infrastructure that needs to be built to handle what the data requirements are going to be. What are some other features that uh, you would be looking for in software-defined storage? So I think one thing we should talk about is, um, is the whole separation of control and data planes. One of the things that was um, was specified in the storage defined networking arena, which obviously is where the, this, um, this terms come from, is the idea of separating the, the flow of the data from the management of that particular um, technology. And I think to a certain degree, we'll expect to see that in software defined storage as well. Um, from my perspective, the other things I'd like to see in there, which I think will evolve over time, as Kate mentioned, would include things like QoS, data mobility, and, and obviously things like policy based management where you know, we set a set of standards about how we want something to work and we let the hardware make that decision because we're not really tied to the specifics of the hardware. Kate, would you have uh, anything to add to that? No, I, I think Chris is absolutely right. The, the real um, value of software-defined storage is the, the data services that go into the data plane that really provide all of the feature functionality to whatever infrastructure you're trying to build. So there is separation between the data plane and the control plane, because um, every product needs to have management, right? Um, and the more open a product is to management and APIs, the better it's gonna fit within a person's workload, a person's business, um, to really benefit um, you know, the infrastructure, the architecture overall. So the hardware has to be in there somewhere. So uh, yes. aren't all, aren't all uh, uh, arrays then software defined? If you look at storage itself, yes. Uh, every storage uh, product is software defined because you have to have hardware with software on it to make it do things. Um, but when you really get down into it, we need to look at what that hardware is. Um, the way we see it for HP, our, our definition is it's open industry standards based hardware. Um, you know, we're looking at x86 servers, we're looking at direct attached storage. Anything that, when you add the, ser the uh, storage software to it, it's it's really going to create a new product. It's gonna um, create the shared storage for your virtualized servers. It's going to add new functionality that you did not have by that hardware alone. It's going to allow you to be mobile with your data across your infrastructure. One thing we have to bear in mind is here, there has to be some hardware, definitely. And, and one of the other things we have to think of is we're not going to deliver um, high IOPS, for instance, uh, a high IOPS uh, demand application or, um, or device using SATA drives. So that hardware has to reflect what we want. So, you know, potentially that might contain SSD, it might contain hard drives. But as you said, we're actually taking pretty much commodity standard technology and then we're building something out of that. And that's the subtle difference to what we see traditionally uh, where arrays are being built on bespoke components that are being plugged together very specifically. Well, what I, I think that software-defined storage really brings is kind of new benefits. So you're going to get that flexibility by being able to, to build whatever you want. 
You're going to get efficiency by using the hardware that's already in your infrastructure. And you're going to get the cost savings because you're not having to buy arrays just to get the functionality that you could actually layer upon your servers. Is storage virtualization the same as software-defined storage? My my answer to this is no, and, and Chris may have uh, a different point. I think storage virtualization is an aspect of an array, um, depending on um, the product. You know, it, it could be part of the feature set. Um, I see software-defined storage as an actual full product that is layered upon the hardware. So the whole the whole aspect, all the data services that it provides. That is software-defined storage. Yeah, I think I think you're right there, Kate. Um, I see storage virtualization um, as a subset, and I see storage uh, software-defined storage as a superset of virtualization. It just happens to be one of those feature that, features that are in there. There's obviously a lot more that we've talked about already that would need to be included to make it, as you said, a full set, a, a full feature product. Chris, should software-defined storage networking also be included? So this, this is an interesting discussion because clearly within the networking environment, we talk about software-defined um, networking um, for the, the, the piece of the, the infrastructure which passes data across you know, between servers and storage or you know, between devices. Within the storage arena, we have both um, the fabric, which would, you know, would be the standard uh, network, which could be fiber channel, or could be iSCSI or other things, and then we've got the physical persistence of storing that data. And I think perhaps sometimes we need to consider both because clearly we want the ability to both store that data, but we also want the ability to redirect it sometime in the future or, or to be able to replicate it and do other things. So I think there's an opportunity there to evolve the, the networking side to be part of this definition. That really hasn't been done yet. And I think you're right there. I think as the software defined data center evolves, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to take many years to evolve so that we have software servers and networking and storage all working together. Um, I think now we, we kind of have the piece parts and it's it's starting. Um, and I, I think the evolution will, will come in, in a few years time. Kate, what about uh, software defined storage in the hypervisor? I think there are people in the industry that are claiming that they've, they've implemented that. I think that's one way of deploying it. Um, it, it depends on I guess the feature functionality that you can truly get from it already built in, um, it means it is proprietary. So you have to run your infrastructure on that hypervisor. Um, there's no kind of changing over time. Um, I think the, the benefit of having it um, in more of a virtual machine is that it's movable, um, that it can change hardware. Uh, and I, I wonder if, having it buried in a hypervisor is really limiting. And Chris, you probably can uh, speak more freely from an independent uh, mm -hmm. blogging perspective. Yeah, um, it, it's, it's true you know, that some of the vendors have started to say that their products are doing this already, and to a certain degree they are, because you, know, you could look at, say, um, VMware, and they have, with things like DRS and some of their other features, they have the ability to put that policy layer in there. Um, they are doing abstraction of that. Um, but you're also tied to that particular um, one enclosure. So, you know, how do you make that flexible across multiple hypervisors? How do you give yourself flexibility across physical servers and so on? That isn't necessarily the mobility that you might want with um, software-defined storage. So you are still tying yourself in slightly. So are, are some of those offerings blurring the boundaries within uh, software-defined uh, uh, storage? I think there's a chance that they could do because, you know, you've got some other features that have been brought in as part of technology and the hardware that are having to be supported that are directly connected to um, to the hypervisor. So some of the things we see today like the AAI um, and the, the other acceleration technologies that are being put into the hardware mean that we're, we're sort of mixing those different pieces of technology. Now, I guess it's probably not a problem as long as those interfaces are clear and well-defined and open. Um, because then you can implement it in a, in a more consistent fashion. But where it's not, then obviously that potentially is a problem. Kate, what is HP's approach uh, in this situation? We want to have a product that can work in anybody's infrastructure. 
So we're going to be very hypervisor independent. We're going to be very hardware agnostic. Um, and we're going to provide the key functionality that you need um, for your storage for your virtualized environment. But we don't necessarily um, don't necessarily care what the underlying um, piece parts are. So as long as they're HP parts, I guess. <laughs> it, it, it's better if they're HP, HP yes. Right, absolutely. But it's not limited to that. Well, no. what about other vendors? Where does the EMC uh, Viper uh, system fit in? So that's an interesting one. So Viper, and, and I think Kate and I both talked about this, um, and I'll let Kate have her, you know, saying what she thinks as well. Um, uh, EMC have, have obviously taken a slightly different approach in that they've decided to go for the, the control piece first. Um, and they're looking at how they can abstract that in terms of provisioning and management. And, and that's pretty much the majority, I think, of what they're producing with Viper. Although they are doing some work around the, ex the export of data to different formats like Hadoop and so on. Can you really have uh, SDS uh, with only the control plane? So I don't think so. Um, I think it needs. I think it needs three parts. I think it needs to be able to work on uh, open hardware. I think it needs that, that data plane to bring in the services to your infrastructure, and I think it, it does need that control plane to add the management piece. And I think by by for using arrays that are already in the infrastructure kind of defeats the purpose of the benefits of software-defined storage. I mean, it's supposed to be cost-effective. It's supposed to add efficiency. It's supposed to add the flexibility to the environment. Um, and I think by just adding the control plane, you're focusing on managing what's already there, uh, but you're not adding extra feature functionality. And and just to, to add to that case, there's something we should, we should consider, and that's the underlying technology that's being abstracted there, you're purely reliant on those features. So if those if those arrays only support certain features, then that's all you get. You don't get a, a, an, an additional level of software abstraction to allow you to do other things in that data plane. Well, Chris, it looked like you took a poll or a survey amongst a number of people in the industry. Can you e explain what you were seeking and uh, share some of those results? Yeah, sure. So um, I think I mentioned earlier that there is a Wikipedia page which has um, some definition around what software-defined storage means. What I was very keen to do was find out whether um, what people's views were and what they actually thought that, um, that those definitions were like and how accurate they were. So what I did was I put up a poll on the site and I asked people to respond over the, the course of a couple of months. Now, as a response um, level, it was you know it wasn't high. Um, it's only in the hundreds, so it's not a massive um, survey, but it's still potentially relevant. And what I found was that something like 26% of people think that um, software-defined storage should should be delivered on white box commodity hardware, as per the definition um, in Wikipedia. The second thing they think is at around 22% is that it should be policy-driven storage. So clearly that means not relying on the specific hardware, but putting in their specific policy requirements around perhaps tiering or performance or so on. After that, we saw a pretty sort of average between 15 and 10% around things like virtual volumes, management of traditional arrays, and separation of those storage maintenance operations. So pretty much it's clear that people are focusing on the idea of commodity and policy as the two main two main parts to this. No, and I think, I think that's a good view of what people need for their infrastructure. I think that's also part of what's going to differentiate all the products that are part of software-defined storage category. Um, I think we need to kind of agree on the base aspects of it and then be able to have those, those different functions um, to differentiate because um, we can't all be the same. <laughs> Well, Chris, thanks very much for, for sharing your survey with us. I have to save the last uh, uh, question for Kate here. Kate, uh, if you're thinking about software-defined uh, storage, why HP and why now? So HP has been in this virtual storage, software-defined storage market for six years now. Uh, we actually have the most robust product that's out there in the market, uh, and we have full functionality, we have uh, full integration with multiple hypervisors and are continuing to 
invest in the platform and we'll we'll continue to grow it and you'll you'll see that later this year excellent well thanks to you for joining us here as well and thanks to each of you for joining us here on hp tech talks uh we're going to be talking with the folks from cloud computing coming up here next week i'm andy mccaskey for sdr news thanks and we'll see you again